Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, over $20 million worth of marijuana plants unearthed in Georgia. Authorities charging four Chinese nationals in the bust. A new order from President Biden cracking down on the sale of personal data to foreign adversaries. That's as officials caution security risks from countries like China. The U.S. Army planning to cut 24,000 vacant positions. More on the strategic shift happening from countering terrorism in the Middle East to targeting threats elsewhere. And Beijing revising its state secrets law, expanding the scope of what it could consider criminal information sharing. Does the change spell more risks for foreign companies operating in China? A surprise bust for law enforcement officials in Georgia. They thought they were raiding an illegal food manufacturing plant in Pierce County, but it turned out to be a marijuana grow operation. Officials found over $20 million worth of cannabis plants inside the facility. While executing the search warrant, the officers discovered the largest indoor marijuana grow operation in Pierce County history. Over 11,000 marijuana plants were seized with an estimated street value of $22.35 million. Four Chinese nationals were arrested. One of them entered the U.S. illegally and has been detained by immigration enforcement agents. The suspects have been charged with felony marijuana manufacturing and possession of marijuana. All four have been denied bond. Illegal marijuana farms operated by Chinese nationals with possible links to the Chinese regime are popping up across America. They're often part of larger criminal networks involved in money laundering, human trafficking and forced labor. In Maine, authorities discovered over 270 suspected Chinese illegal marijuana grows. A leaked memo from the Department of Homeland Security estimates that it could bring in over $4 billion in revenue infiltration of this money they, it is infiltrated in everyday businesses that you and i might might uh, attend and and so all of a sudden they'll turn these illicit funds into legitimate funds through whatever business you can imagine they have done it and also when it comes to the chinese uh criminal groups they're very very secretive and it's very difficult to sometimes get the information out of them even after they've been under arrest over in Oklahoma, the wild west of grow operations, authorities have flagged 3,000 marijuana farms for suspicious activity. Over 60 percent of them have a Chinese connection. Similar Chinese operations have been found in California, Washington, Oregon, Massachusetts, Michigan, Colorado and Nevada. Fifty members of Congress have asked the Justice Department for a briefing on the matter. A new bid to protect Americans' most sensitive information from falling into China's hands. President Biden issued an executive order Wednesday, putting up safeguards around personal data. Here's a look at what's driving his concerns. President Biden signed an executive order Wednesday. It looks to make it harder for China and Russia to get Americans' data. The directive targets a big concern. Beijing has been collecting all kinds of data on Americans, from DNA to financial information. U.S. companies have also been building profiles on millions of Americans, from their favorite hobbies to annual income and health conditions. And it's completely legal for data brokers to sell that data to China and Russia. The executive order aims to stop this from happening. Such information could prove useful for adversaries. For example, if bad actors know an American's health and financial data, they could pry into their private life, spy on them, and even blackmail them. The White House has warned that lawmakers and military personnel have a higher risk of being blackmailed. It noted China could collect data on activists, academics, journalists, dissidents, and others to profile them. Though it could be hard to enforce the rules. Experts note that adversaries could buy data from third parties. Other efforts are underway to protect American data. Lawmakers in both chambers have introduced bills targeting China's largest genomics company, BGI. If they pass, medical providers funded by federal money won't be able to use BGI products. Right now, BGI is the leading provider of genetic sequencing equipment on the U.S. market. It said the bill could drive it out of the U.S. market. 
they are extensions of state security, state intelligence, and they they are the eyes and the ears and the collectors. I, I'm, I'm sorry, this is that we have to just be realistic on these matters. Mike Gallagher is the chairman of the House Select China Committee. He's also a main sponsor of the House bill. He said BGI collects genetic data on Americans and uses it for research within the Chinese military. Gallagher added Beijing could use that data to develop bioweapons to target the American people. A major overhaul for the U.S. Army to prepare it for future wars. The Pentagon planning to cut 24,000 jobs and restructure its forces. The move is significant as it also signals after two decades of war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the U.S. Army is moving away from counterterrorism and shifting its focus to threats from China and Russia. Worth noting, these cuts are empty posts, not actual soldiers. The Pentagon has struggled to hire enough people to fill these posts and said it's not asking soldiers to leave the force. These jobs were added to fight terrorism in wars with Iraq and Afghanistan, but aren't needed as much today. In the meantime, the U.S. Army plans to add 7,500 troops to other missions. That includes air defense, counter drone units, and new task forces on cyber, intelligence, and long strike capabilities. U.S. Secretary of the Army Christine Wormuth said the U.S. is moving away from counterterrorism and needs to be postured for large scale combat operations. Grim news for foreign businesses in China. Beijing is upping the ante on its state secrets law, expanding its definition of sensitive information even further, and what it could consider criminal if shared. It's the first time the Chinese regime has amended the law since 2010. The revised law adds a new category of restricted information, dubbed work secrets, that China says could cause certain adverse effects if leaked. But it doesn't define what qualifies. The change comes after the Communist Party recently bolstered a sweeping anti-spying law and passed an information security rule. Together, the measures have sparked concern among foreign companies operating in the country, with many fearing that the vaguely defined rules could turn normal business activities into criminal offenses. Amid an already hostile environment, Chinese authorities have targeted U.S. due diligence firms, raiding the China-based offices of Bain & Co., Mintz Group and Cap Vision. Beijing has already arbitrarily detained a number of foreign executives, blocking some of them from leaving mainland China. Details about the so-called work secrets will reportedly be released later. The new law goes into effect in May. China seemingly torn between data control and growing its sluggish economy. U.S. Ambassador to China Nicholas Burns highlighted the paradox in a recent interview. He says China is sending contradictory messages. It claims to be open for business, yet at the same time cracks down on U.S. companies. This comes amidst reports of Chinese police raiding American offices, with employees facing potential accusations of spying for doing checks on potential investors. A further sign of the deepening real estate crisis in China, Chinese property giant Country Garden is facing a liquidation petition after non-payment of a loan worth over $200 million. Here's what you need to know. China's property crisis has taken another turn for the worse. Giant developer Country Garden is the latest to face a liquidation petition. The firm revealed the news Wednesday. It said the petition was filed by creditors over non-payment of a loan worth $205 million. Country Garden says it will resolutely oppose the move, with a court date set for May 17th. But the petition will revive concern among homebuyers and investors over the country's ailing property sector. It comes just a month after big arrival Evergrande was ordered to liquidate by a Hong Kong court. A string of other developers have also defaulted on their debt payments. The sector has lurched from one crisis to another since 2021, when regulators cracked down on the massive debts being piled up at property firms. Now it's all a growing headache for Beijing, with real estate accounting for around a quarter of China's economy. Country Garden says it will continue to work with creditors on a restructuring plan. In October, it missed a $15 million debt payment, prompting groups of bondholders to start organising action against the firm. 
One investor told Reuters the company had messed around and wasted time ever since, and said it was no surprise if some creditors had now run out of patience. China's maritime ambitions are growing alongside rising concerns about Chinese spy cranes in U.S. ports. With the U.S.-China tensions escalating, how can Washington fortify its defenses? Plus a deep dive into understanding the Chinese Communist Party's agenda. We sat down with Casey Fleming, CEO of intelligence and security strategy firm Black Ops Partners, for insight. Casey Fleming, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you for having me. A senior administration official noted that $5.4 trillion in economic activity and over 90 percent of overseas trade moves through these ports that the cranes are over, noting the importance of bolstering our cybersecurity. Now, given what's at stake here, why has the U.S. been using Chinese-made cranes all this time? We should be using U.S.-built cranes or free world cranes. Why would you ever have Chinese cranes, uh, you know, that are software driven? They can be shut down. They can be. They they certainly are critical infrastructure, not just for the U.S. at U.S. ports, but worldwide. And you have to understand. The, you know, you have to think like war and in a wartime effort. And that's exactly where Xi Jinping has his head and his troops and his country headed. Zooming out here, Xi Jinping, China's regime leader, has been saying for years that he wants to change China to a maritime superpower. How do you see these ports and these cranes fitting into that strategy? Completely supporting the CCP strategy, which is unrestricted warfare, and completely shutting down anything that the free world needs through those ports. So think about that in a wartime situation and supporting war. Think about what that's all about. You've got cranes that won't work for the U.S. and cranes that are tracking U.S. cargo or free world cargo and making it sit off into the uh, the shipyard somewhere while fast tracking uh, the other cargo that supports the Chinese Communist Party. Given all that's at stake here, how can the U.S. bolster its own defenses? Number one is education through our federal government, uh, through state and local government, and through our population. Say, and, and you have to think like the Chinese Communist Party, like Xi Jinping, and what he's ordering his country to do and his other allies to do, which are Russia, Iran, uh, North Korea and uh, Pakistan, and then Iran, of course, running and being the puppet master for the terrorist organizations. So this is World War II, I, I say this all the time, this is World War II all over again, but this time it's at the speed of technology and the stealth of unrestricted warfare. Casey Fleming, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Before you go, we have a special announcement. We're excited to announce our new documentary, Hollywood Takeover. China's control in the film industry is premiering on the red carpet in Los Angeles on March 6th at 6.30 p.m. To celebrate, we're hosting a sweepstakes for our China in Focus audience. Enter to win two tickets to the event in Hollywood. Please use this link to enter before the end of the day, Wednesday, February 28th. For more information about the documentary, please visit HollywoodTakeover.com. The film will release globally on March 8th on Epoch TV. That's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A new investigation is underway in the U.S. solar industry to make sure no Chinese goods made with forced labor can cross the U.S. border. The Department of Homeland Security is on the move. After an approval delay for listing on the New York Stock Exchange, China-based fast fashion giant Xi'an is looking to go public in London. And China's ambitions for the global aviation market on full display at a recent air show. But is its new aircraft ready to take on industry giants Boeing and Airbus? More on that after the break here on China in Focus. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.